Is this, though, as good as it gets, given the recession risks and the squeeze on households and businesses here in the UK? Good morning. No, we're very pleased with the results. It's a continuing set of progress with strong performance income up 16% and 2.8 billion of operating profit. Um, this is a continued delivery and consistent delivery. What we have is a very capital generative business. We're supporting our customers as they grow. And what we're seeing is still strong demand for our lending and our products and consumers and businesses being very resilient in the face of economic uncertainty at this point. Alison, good morning. I guess I'm going to kind of ask Tom's question again another way. As you said, it's great results. Your customers are being resilient. But can that resilience continue? Are you just as optimistic that you can continue such strong kind of growth in the, in the second half of this year as you've seen the first half? Yeah, we, we are optimistic about growth. I mean, we're very aware of the challenges that are people are facing. But as we sit here today, we're seeing no signs of distress or default. But what we're trying to do is get ahead. For a lot of households and businesses, they haven't had to operate in an inflationary or high-interest environment for 10 to 15 years. So we're proactively outreaching to targeted sectors like agriculture, to around 3 million of our customers, to really help them with how they can cope with supply chain disruption, higher energy prices. Um, we have a well-diversified um, and very strong risk management at the bank. 92% of our business is secured. And so working alongside our customers and making sure they can um, continue to be successful is, is something we're really focused on. We actually have upgraded our mm. income guidance for, for the year, and we're going to continue to support our customers. I think strong capital, a capital generative business, it means we can support our customers through the economic cycle ahead. Alison, can you give us some granularity, given the data, the numbers that you see, the flows into the bank around, around those households, that household spending? Are we seeing a move from the, from the savings that were built up during the pandemic to, to more credit card spending? What, what is the credit card spend looking like? How do you expect that to evolve? Yeah, I mean, deposits still remain very strong. What we're seeing is households have a, a buffer in terms of the cash deposits, and there is still a huge amount of liquidity sitting on corporate and, and business balance sheets. What we're seeing at the moment in terms of debit and credit card spending for our customers is actually, although there are increases clearly, particularly in fuel and energy prices, the real increase in spending at the moment is on travel and hospitality. So we're still seeing a bit of that post-pandemic recovery at as people go forward. I mean, in businesses where a lot of our lending growth is coming as people re-engineer their supply chain, so we're seeing continued growth in asset financing and invoice financing, but cash and liquidity remains very strong. So there is a resilience, a buffer built in household finances and business balance sheets. And even into this quarter, we were still seeing deposits remaining very robust. Now, as I look forward, that's where we're really focusing, you know, 20 to 30 percent increase in energy costs that households are going to face you are going to see a squeeze in disposable income you know business confidence i think is is clearly an issue as we go into these more difficult times so it's really about making sure we're being proactive around where we can put our support and make sure it's really targeted to the areas that need it most so, Alison, you talked about being proactive in terms of helping your customers, both on the business side and the consumer side, in terms of uh, how, dealing with the cost of living crisis, the inflation problems. But I guess I'm curious, where are you seeing the pain points for your own business from inflation? Yeah, I mean, clearly we're seeing inflation um, and challenges in our supplier costs. We're seeing um, challenges for our staff. We've put in more pay rises this year. We're very conscious that, you know, as well as our customers facing a, a cost of living squeeze, so are our colleagues. So we put in exceptional pay rise through a few weeks ago, 4% for our lowest threshold um, colleagues um, as top of the pay rise we put earlier this year. So we're seeing inflation in wages and, and salaries. I mean, it's quite an interesting dynamic at the moment. You've got um, full employment pretty much and high levels of vacancy. So what we're seeing is both making sure we're targeting the lowest earning, who are going to really feel that squeeze on disposable income, but also still a real fight for talent and, and key, um, key skills happening. So we're targeting salary increases. Yeah. That inflation will come through in our book. Also suppliers and contractors will come through um, in inflation for us as well. Alison, in that context, you're one of the few banks that are targeting absolute cost reductions. 
Is that still possible in this inflationary environment? Will you succeed in getting absolute cost reductions? Yeah, absolutely. We've reiterated our guidance for the full year this year of a 3% cost reduction. We're, um, we're at 1.5% at this half year. Um, we're very comfortable with that. We're two years into a $3 billion investment program, and it is the benefit of that investment program that is supporting our cost reduction and improving operational leverage through the business. Um, next year, going forward, we've said our costs will be broadly stable. Um, we're protecting real investment in the business as we continue to see the benefit of that, as, um, which is underlying our strong growth and performance this half. Uh, Alison, we've got the Bank of England expected to hike rates again for about the sixth time, for the sixth time next week. Uh, t talk us about the impact uh, of those higher interest rates across the business, particularly net interest margins. Uh, presumably, that remains supportive. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're seeing strong growth in our net interest margins, um, and we would expect that conti to continue. We're assuming in our economic forecast that interest rates will get to 2% by the end of this year, and clearly there's a lot of volatility in that. Um, but clearly, as um, fiscal policy comes in to get inflation under control, um, those interest rates will um, improve on them as we move forward. Alison, you've talked a lot about what you're doing to help your customers around inflation and your employees. What more should the government be doing about the cost of living crisis? Well, I think it's making sure we're targeting those most in need. What we've done is really think about where are the key pressures. So, for example, the agriculture sector is somewhere where we've put 1.25 billion um, lending package in place because they're getting the real concentrated pressure of fertilizer costs, energy costs. I think making sure those on lower disposable incomes are really getting um, the support they need. What we're really encouraging people to do is come and talk to the banks, talk to partners to make sure they can get the help. I think for the government, it's making sure the Bank of England um, continue to get inflation under control and that we continue to support those on the lowest income possible. Uh, Alison, I'd like to get your views on this. Uh, I mean, this time last year, there was a lot of discussion about those up-and-coming tech startups here in the city uh, across the UK, kind of trying to take, a, take some share from, from the incumbents. And I wonder, the likes of Klarna now, valuations are being squeezed, of course, on the back of higher rates and question marks about unprofitable businesses. Do you, do you look at those, you kind of wet your lips and think, mm, maybe uh, there's some appetite there to make an acquisition uh, around some of these fintech startups, or do you want to build out some of those products in-house? Well, I mean, we always take the view, I've always taken the view we will look to partner with fintechs. Um, I think on the area like Buy Now, Pay Later, we've launched a Buy Now, Pay Later product internally. I think we we're one of the first UK banks to do that, but, but very firmly in a very responsible way. Um, we've made it part of um, our lending criteria, and we treat it almost as if it's a regulated product because I think it's about making sure it's responsible lending. Um, you know, we think having lots of fintechs in the market is great. It um, gives more choice to consumers, but for uh, for our business, we're continuing to grow. We're acquiring new customers. Um, we've had 310,000 new current accounts open this half. Um, we've got record numbers of startup businesses opening accounts with us, which is a sign of a real thriving economy. It's continuing to support entrepreneurs, which is really important. So we'll continue to partner with fintechs um, and make sure we continue to grow the business in our own way.